Good morning, folks. I'm in the original Valley of the Sun this morning, ready to speak at the Electric Universe Conference today for the fourth year in a row. But hey, we've got space weather. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find, as we come to 193 angstroms, that will quickly interrupt this solar rotation to show the uptick in solar flaring over the last day, numerous C-class emissions, one M-class solar flare. We're going to see that both the Earth-facing group and the limb incomer are active, but the biggest burst shot due north of the Earth-facing group. A sunspot finally put off a good eruption while directly facing our planet, and it gets sent directly to the North Pole and away from our planet, the rippling upwards. And finally, in 304 angstroms, you can see brightening, but no major plasma ejection. The sunspots are something of note. The Earth-facing group stretches more than 100,000 kilometers across and has two magnetic complexity points in the middle where those polarities are appearing to want to interact. Sliding over as well to the new incoming spots, that one looks mean as it is longitudinally spread rather than laterally. We'll go next to the solar wind, speed in purple, and you can see that we're still at the peak stream portion from the coronal hole, and that has caused enduring low-level geomagnetic storms, but nothing more serious. Interesting article out about supernova surprises. In a piece that rings eerily similar to Hannes Alfin's warning against using frozen-in magnetic field lines in space plasma, there is a clear tone that they are lacking full understanding of the physics of what's going on. They plainly state that our level of knowledge around things we claim certainty is embarrassing, and indeed it's causing them to question their efforts in things like universal expansion. Up next, NASA and many others tracked a powerful CME through space back in 2014, and we are now learning what that CME looked like all the way out to Mars, Saturn, Pluto, and beyond. Slowed, bunched, slowed, spread, and slowed some more. I might suggest going back to the morning news from October 14th or 15th, 2014, just to see how we covered the eruption, and for a full perspective of events to news to academic study in terms of timing. Folks, if you have the Disaster Prediction app, you knew a solar flare took place last night. Make sure your phone can receive notifications and that you've got them turned on. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 3.45 a.m. at the Electric Universe Conference in Phoenix. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.